who are you? Hello, my name is Anna Freud, daughter of Sigmund Freud. I was born on December 3rd, 1895. I did not have a great relationship with my mother, and I did not get along with my siblings, especially my sister Sophie, with who I fought over my father's attention. I was sent to health camps over the years to overcome my health problems. I suffered from depression and anorexia during my teenage years. Eventually, my father and I became really close, and although for a while I was unsure of what I wanted to do, I decided to follow my father's footsteps. I preserved my father's ideas, but I also extended them into my own, and new ideas regarding child analysis. Who are you? Hello, my name is Melanie Klein. I was born on March 30, 1882. I was the youngest of four children. Two of my siblings died at a young age. My older sister, who taught me how to read and write, died when I was four. And my older brother, Emmanuel, who taught me Greek and Latin, died really young as well. When I was 18, my father passed away. Although I did not suffer any illness when I was young, the deaths of my family members led me to suffer from depression. I tried to attend medical school to study psychiatry, but instead marry at age 21. So I passed medical school because of my marriage. I had three children, which brought the happiness back to my life. I, I studied art and history at the University of Vietnam, yet I never lost interest in going to medical school. Although I did attend this school, I never actually received any degree, which is why many people did not respect my views due to the lack of proof of medical knowledge. I began my interest in the field of psychoanalysis after my father had began psychoanalyzing me. In 1923, I began my own psychoanalytical work with children, and later on I taught a seminar on techniques to analyze children at the Vienna Psychoanalytical Training Institute. This work resulted in my first book named Introduction to the Techniques of Child Analysis. I later became the secretary of the International Psychoanalytical Association in 1927, and in 1935, I became the director of the Vienna Psychoanalytical Training Institute. In 1910, I came across one of Freud's book on dreams. As a result, psychoanalysis became my interest. I began a course of psychoanalysis with Sander Forensic that same year. Forensic was the one that encouraged me to analyze my own children. After that, I began developing a technique of child analysis. In 1918, I met Sigmund Freud for the first time at a meeting between the Austrian and Hungarian society. As a result, I was really impressed with Freud's work that the interest that I had for psychoanalysis was strengthened by that impression. In Berlin, I was introduced to Carl Abraham. He was the one that encouraged me to practice, practice child analysis. In 1921, I opened a psychoanalytical practice with both adults and children. Psychoanalytical techniques allow me to help emotionally disturbed children. Most of my contributions in child analysis came from the work I did during the war. I worked with children in war nurseries who were separated from one parent. I studied the child's behaviors, adaptions, and integrations, as well as the search to find an alternative parent in the nurses. I emphasize the importance of phallic and genital stages of development, as well as dreams and fantasies of the children. In the article, The Fantasies and Daydream, I explain that daydreams, which are consciously designed to suppress masturbation, are mainly unconsciously an elaboration to original masturbatory fantasies. I believe that good and bad, right and wrong, develop during the phallic stage. This is where Melanie and I disagreed on child analysis. I believe that if the child was in a parental and an educational environment, he or she did not need therapy unless the child showed extreme behaviors. As well as Anna Freud, I also worked with children during the work. I developed, I developed the techniques of play therapy to uncover children's unconscious motivations. I believe that children, through the use of play and drawings, project their feelings in therapeutic sessions. The way children play with toys reveals earlier infantile fantasies and anxieties. Children's unconscious lives could be 
understood by the by analysts through their non-verbal behaviors. Notions of good and bad and right or wrong develop during the oral stage, not the phallic stage as Anna Freud and her father assume. My book, The Ego and Mechanism of Defense, led to the movement of ego psychology. I disagree with Melanie's beliefs that children and adults can be analyzed the same. I believe that there was a big difference between analyzing children and adults. Because of this, I emphasized the ego when it came to child analysis. The major differences are that children do not remember traumatic events like adults do. I also believed that sexual energy and a child in relation to their parents lead to psychosexual development, which was overcame when the superego rose. I believe that the superego develops in infancy, which is in the first and second years of life. Fear and aggressive tendencies are also present at this age and are more important in understanding deviant development than psychosexual development. My work and views contributed to the understanding of child analysis. I liked observing children and parent interactions because they gave me a good insight of their development. I was ranked the 99th most cited psychologist in the 21st century. Along with Melanie, I was considered the founder of psychoanalytical child psychology. And although Melanie had an impact on child analysis, my views were the ones that generally prevailed on the impact of child analysis. My work is mostly recognized for play therapy and the development of object relations. I am perhaps the most important woman psychoanalysis who ever lived, yet the least well known to American psychologists. I inaugurated the school of psychoanalysis known as Object Relations Theory. The Psychoanalysis of Children was the first book that I wrote. Well, thank you, thank Melanie. You. Thank you, Anna.